Hi guys, I'm Johnny, the application engineer of Shining 3D. Today's topic is how to efficiently use Acufab D1. And the best way to reach this goal is fully understand its operation. Let's start. So, today's contents can be mainly divided into three parts. Preparation. Introduction of software and post treatment. Let's see the main structure of Acufab D1. If you open the chamber door, you can see several main components, which is highly related to the printing result. Built platform, Zen tank, and you cannot see is a protection glass of projector. We can see the platform is fixed by the platform bracket. So the first time you use this machine, you need to do the manual level. And the bottom frame is consists of the touch screen and power button. Inside this frame uh, is an optical system. Have control board and the projector. The back view of Acufab D1 it consists of several main ports and still a uh, power button. And the main factors will influence the printing result is temperature, resin, and the light. So pace of light you need to check at first. And then you need to do the level adjustment. And I will tell you very uh, detailed uh, procedures later. Then let's turn to software. And I will also show you which the function of each button mean. Third, the post treatment. It's very easy, just the three steps. First, detach the models and then wash it. Finally, post treat it in our curing machine, FabQ. Okay, let's start. Printing quality will be affected by three main factors, light, resin, and the environment. Environment is always the first thing you need to check. Let's see. Now the room temperature is around 25 degrees and the humidity is 41%. So the proper range of the Humidity is around 30% to 60% and the suitable temperature is 25 degrees minus or plus 2 degrees. And the second part, second factor of the printing quality is the pace of the light. And we can see there is a resin tank. Uh, two structure will influence the pace of light. First is the resin tank. Another is the protector glasses of the projector. So let's check the resin tank first. Uh, the first thing is the FVP film, which on the surface on the top of the resin tank. And we can see it's not clean enough. And let's check the back glass of the resin tank. There are many fingerprint here and dirt or stains. So it's not available in this printing. We need to change another. Let's see. A clean resin tank should be like this. Not any dirt, stains or fingerprint here. And then we need to check the protected glass as we mentioned before. Sometimes you may find it's very hard to see it clearly on the surface if any uh, dust or maybe fingerprint here. So let's turn to the project settings. So we turn on the statues. And we can see there is an option named white. You can touch this button. 
But before that, your attention please. Never forgot to wear your UV protection goggles to protect your eyes. Okay, after wearing this, you can touch the white options and you can see there are many dirt here, very dirty. So we need to clean it. Okay? Uh, when you need to clean the glasses, you need to loose the screws on the four corners by anti-clockwise. Now you can see there are metal frame. This is to prevent the resins drop on the glass and other components under the machine. And then is a red base. This is to protect the glasses. And here we can take off the glass. and change a clean one. So now I have changed the new glass and tied all the screws. We can still use the same method to check the dirt. Turn on the status in project settings and push the white button. We can see there are not so uh, not any dirt or dust on the surface. That means the pace of light is clean enough. So now we can place our resin tank and go to the final step of the preparation check which we call is uh, level adjustment. As we know the resin is uh, cured layer by layer and built up on the platform here. So we need to ensure the positions of the first layer is correct. That's also why layer adjustment, uh, sorry, the level adjustment is so important. Otherwise, the drop of the models will happen during the printing. Now, I will show you step by step how to manual level. Now, let's do the level adjustment. First, we need to turn to the machine settings. And then, Go to the platform adjustment and press manual level. Before tick OK, you need to check if you have already loosened all the screws in the platform brackets. Yes, we did. So press OK. 
and you can see the Z axis was slowly moving down until they are fully attached by the resin tank. Before you tight all the screws, you need to check if there are any gaps between platform and the resin tank. Using a small piece of paper and insert them into four corners of the platform. In normal situations, it cannot be inserted. And yes, now there is no gaps, so you need to tight all the screws. Please bear in mind, you need to use one hand push the platform to make it fully attached with the resin tank and another hand tie the screws by clockwise. And still diagonally. You need to tie it twice. First time, just a little bit touch the bracket. Another time, fully lock them. And you can also hear some sound. That means they are closely touched. Okay. We finished and then tick OK. The Z axis were slowly moving back. However, if you want to double check if there are any gaps we can use another function the same blanket platform adjustment use auto level this is to mimic the normal uh, printing process how the platform and the zinc tank attached And we still can use a small piece of paper to double check in the same procedures. And now, the four corners, there's no gap. So, can wait the pressure sensor finishing its job okay so we now we press the Z axis move to top and then we can go to the final track of the another main factors to the final results which is a resin
Now, because today we will print the orthodontic models, so we use this material OD01. And before you use it, you need to evenly shake it around one minute. After even shaking it, then we can pull them until it attaches the max. Okay, so the so all preparation job are finished. Let's go to the introduction of the 3D DLP software. It's time to introduce our slicing software, 3D DLP. I will show you the function of each icon in order of workflow. Okay, let's open the program. And you have three methods to load the file. First, as a start menu, open or add a file. Then, as the icon of the add files. Or you can directly drag your data into this. Next step, you can check the integrity of the data by changing different views. Before that, you may be also interested in some hotkeys of this software. Pressing left mouse button can move the view. Pressing right mouse button, you can rotate the view. And rolling the mouse wheel is zoom in or zoom out. Another way to alter the site is using the right menu bar. You can choose the perspective of default, front, back, left, right, top, and bottom view. Sometimes if you are dissatisfied with the way how models place, we can also turn to the move button by click the models or press culture and A at the same time to select all models. And you can press culture and the left mouse buttons to move it. But please remember there are always uh, one directions you cannot move because we need to bind in one plane or one axis. And you may notice uh, there are also some hotkeys like button. Button means you want these models uh, stick to the platform. And move to center as its name suggests. Also, we have function of reset. This is turned to the original status. And if these functions cannot meet your needs, you can direct to the rotate. Similarly, they have uh, when directions must be binded. And we have functions like flip, which is a rotate the models at 108 degrees. And very important functions, select bottom place, which is you can select the surface you want to adhere to the platform. And the same, reset. And there also are functions which is not often used in scale. You can enlarge or contract them. 
by enter. And the hotkeys are scale to max sets and reset. Sometimes if you want, don't want to arrange the models one by one, you can use this intelligent composition button. And it will automatically arrange the position for you. Okay, now, because I want to save time, so I would select to place it as a horizontal directions. As a default view, you can see they are not correctly arranged, so intelligence position. And the final step is uh, support. We have uh, three kinds of base type, and we can see these pictures to show what the type means. Normal projections means it will follow your contour. Outer contour means it will fill the hollow structures. And the bounding box means it will block all the directions. And if you want to automatically generate support, so you can click this button. And we can see the base height means the thickness of the base here. And the top radius means the wide of top area in the support. And the similarly, the bottom radius means the wide of the bottom of the support. And the height is means the length of the support. And also the spacing, it means how intensive you want to put the support. And they have three options for the support structures, like inclined. It means you allow this top support have some degrees instead of vertically attach the models and the inner we usually don't take it because we don't our models have some support in its inner layer and the reinforce means you can strengthen the support like this okay so if you are not happy with uh, automatically generated support you can also edit them clicks area don't have support means you want to add one if you tick the area have support is to delete them and then if you think it's okay just use support However, these models don't need any support, so we can also clear all support. And make sure the models are stick on the platform, so you can use this right mouse and then tick button to double check. And finally, you can slice them. And you can choose to transmit the data by Wi-Fi or flash disk. Today I will use flash disk. Wi-Fi you can send and print here. Remote control. 
and you can see our machine is ready. Now, when we're finishing the printing, we have the three steps of post treatment. First, is detach the models from the platform, and then wash them in the air core, and then finally post cure them in our post curing machine, FabQ. And you can see, we will send you a box if you buy this Equifab D1, and you can put air core there here and wash the models. After you're washing them, you need to dry by airflow or dust-free cloth. Finally, after drying, we can put the models evenly on the plate. And these also models need to post curing for 10 minutes. And sometimes you may find it's a little bit difficult to clean the inner layer. So we have a special design. The plate can be removed. And you can clean them easily. And then put it back. Okay, that's all for today. Hope it helps.